Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net and welcome back to another very exciting tutorial. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at some missile firing using Jet Strike. This is our new 3D model pack for Element 3D. It also includes extra model formats for 3D Max and Cinema 4D. Now the Element 3D versions are fully rigged and animatable, so landing gear and flaps. And we also put together an additional pack called the Flight Kit. And what this is is stuff like a heat distortion plugin, 200 aircraft sound effects, some explosions, and some sky maps. Basically, there's so much cool stuff in these packs that we had to create a whole new dedicated website just to teaching you how to use it. So we made this place called the Video Copilot Flight School and it consists of a bunch of tutorials to show you exactly how to do many of the cool effects from the promo as well as some brand new ones as well. So you can just go in there and you can go there right now, videocopilot.net forward slash flight school, check out all of the different tutorials and we'll be adding a bunch more as we go on. All right, let's get back to the tutorial. Let's take a look at uh, what we're gonna be creating. So. All right, so we've got the missile firing off and we've got some uh, cool smoke trails here. Also, if we take a look at the promo video, uh, you could use this to do something similar to this. So really cool, you got the weapons bay opening up and uh, in this case, we're just gonna use the wing missile, but you can pretty much do it any way that you want. And the cool thing is that it's all 3D. So let's say we solo a little bit of this you can see that it's all fully three-dimensional as uh, the missiles are firing off and you can even see a little bit of reactive lighting from the missile so that's kind of a cool effect obviously with the motion blur it's going to be more intense and of course with the jet strike models you can also go into the settings for element 3d and open up the weapons bay inside the aircraft rig so you could go in there say open up the weapons bay and do the same thing with the missiles inside. So maybe the missiles come out of the weapons bay and uh, there you go. Let's go ahead and uh, set this up and uh, show you how to do it. So here I just have a comp set up with the background and some lighting. I have most of this covered in some of the other tutorials. So I'll just skip that and we'll get right to the missile firing. So I'm gonna create a new solid and uh, we'll call this jet and we'll hit okay. Then we'll take the effect element 3D, drop that onto our layer, and load up the scene setup. Then we'll come down to Jet Strike, which will show up in your model browser. And uh, let's scroll down here, and we'll go and pick the Joint Strike number two. And you can see it's got some wing missiles there that'll work perfectly. And by the way, it's a little hard to see, but there's a rig control here that you can do. And if you open that up, you can actually see all of the different animatable parts of these jet craft models. And this will help if you need to change some of the textures for areas of the model that you can't see uh, without the aircraft rig opened up. Anyway, that's just a cool little preview. Let's change the reflection on the windows by going into the environment and changing it from the default to the town. I keep using this one because it really works well for a semi-aerial look. And we can also click on the glass material and to know what a material is, you can turn it on and off to see. And I'm gonna come down here and turn the Fresnel down just a touch so that the reflection is a little more intense. And I might even go down and lower the force opacity. And that way we could just see the pilot in there a little bit better. So that's all, let's hit okay. And here we have our jet. So we can move our camera around the background is pretty straightforward. I just have uh, a couple of background images and I use one of these sky maps from the flight kit just to extend the sky up above uh, where those two layers meet. That's just my background and that is the sky layer. All right, so we've got our shot here and I wanna detach the missile in order to animate it flying off. Now, the main problem is if we move the particle position here, 
everything is going to move together. So we need a way to separate the two. With JetStrike, we added a new feature into Element that allows you to detach things by the mesh name. Normally, you could just kind of disable parts of the materials and isolate it. But we added this feature because we know there's a lot of unique parts on these jets. And it just makes it easier to isolate individual things. Now, here's how it works. What you do is select the object. And there's a settings here called Mesh Visibility. And if we open that up, it shows a list of all the objects that make up that model. And we can go down here and we can actually disable them. So we can come down here to the left wing missile and turn it off. And that'll actually hide it in our model. And then if I hit OK, then that missile has been detached. What I want to do is put that missile on a separate group. So here's how we can do that. We can right click and duplicate the model. And then with this model selected, we can even double click on this and type missile. Hit OK. We could go to the mesh visibility and invert the selection. So if you hold down Alt or Option on a Mac and click on that, it'll actually solo that. So you can see the difference here. It's on, hold down Alt, and there we go. We've inverted that selection. And then of course we could add in some other things if we wanted to make a specific selection. So that's good. We'll hit OK. And I just want to go ahead and put this onto Group 2. So we'll switch that to Group 2 and uncheck Group 1. And that way they'll be separated inside of Element. Let's hit OK. Now, the cool thing is that the model is going to stay exactly the same. So it's not going to change visually, but now we have control over that missile as a separate object. In group two, I can actually move the position of just the missile. That's going to give us the control that we need. But we want to automate this. So there's some cool tips here I want to show you that make this process a lot easier. For group one, I want to come down to the group utility and create a group null. And what that'll do if we open up our timeline here, is allow you to move the jet around inside of the comp. And we can also hit W and we can rotate it really nice. But the main thing you can see here is that the missile is getting left behind. Now that's okay. We'll go back into element and let's scroll down here to group two, open that up and let's create a group null for just the missile. So now we have two nulls. So let's go and name this. We'll call this uh, jet or joint strike and we'll call this missile. So now the missile can be moved independently and the joint strike can be moved independently. But what I can do is I can parent the missile to the joint strike. So I can parent it. Now if I just move the jet, the missile will stay connected. But at any time I could then animate the missile individually to fly off. Let's go and animate our missile being fired. So we'll take the missile null, we'll hit P, and we'll select a keyframe, and we'll turn on the stopwatch and set a keyframe. Then we'll move forward a few seconds, and we'll animate it flying out of the frame, so shooting off. And we can even move these two keyframes over a touch. Now, depending on the type of missile, some missiles will actually drop down and then shoot off. Some will fire from the fixed position. So do a little bit of research to make sure that you're firing it in the correct way. I'm not going to do any research. We're just going to fire this thing off. And chances are some experts are going to be firing off some emails to me to let me know that I've done it terribly wrong, which I accept full responsibility. So depending on how you animate it, the missile can drop down and then take off with just a couple of extra keyframes. Okay, so our missile is firing off here. So let's just take a quick look and see what uh, where we're at. All right, so let's move the keyframes closer together so it's a lot faster. This is the slowest airstrike in the world. All right, so that's pretty good. And maybe we'll animate the camera here while we're here. So hit P and A and uh, we'll set a keyframe. And maybe just... orbit the camera around just so that there's a little bit of movement. All right, so we've got our camera movement. Let's move the animation of our missile a little bit closer. And let's take a look. Okay, perfect. So now I want to go ahead and add some smoke trails. The way we can do that is let's go to the jet layer with element. And we're going to come down to the utility for the generate 3D position. 
I want to put a light right at the back of this missile. So what we could do is select the 2D position operator, click on the back of the missile, and then click generate. And what that'll do is create a null object exactly at that position in 3D space. And now let's go and create a new point light. So we'll choose new light, set it to point, make it orange or a color for the fire, and then set the intensity to zero. And now what I want to do is take the position of that null object and paste it for the light. So we'll hit P, grab the position, edit, copy, and then paste it into the light. And then we can take that null object for the missile and just delete it. And let's call it smoke. And what I'll do is I'll take that and I'll parent it to the missile layer. And that way, wherever the missile goes, the light will stay connected and therefore create the particles moving in the scene. Now, one other small thing that we can do is, let's say we want to animate the missile rotating and spinning forward. What we might do is go into the group and then go down to particle look. Now, if we try to animate the particle rotation, it's not going to work right. And the reason why is that the center is still the entire jet, not just the missile. So the solution is to go down to the multi-object. So remember, the jet is made up of many multiple objects and enable that. And now, if we use the rotation under multi-object, it'll actually spin the object individually. So let's turn the keyframe on for that. And as it moves forward, let's rotate it maybe one revolution. And that'll help make the missile a little bit more realistic. That is that. So now let's go and create our smoke trail. So to do this, we're going to use trap code particular. So let's create a new solid. We'll call this smoke particles and hit OK. Then we'll come over here to the effects. We'll type in particular and drop that onto our layer. Now I'm going to go into the emitter and I want to set the emitter type to a light. And I'm also going to go to the options and type in the light name. Now we named the missile light smoke. So let's type smoke and hit OK. And that way particular knows only to emit particles from that light. And if we scroll down here, just change the particles per second to the light intensity to none. And that way the particles will just come out and based on our own particles per second value. So let's turn the velocity down. And let's turn the size down to zero. And let's see here. So there it is. Let's go to about here. And we'll set the particles per second to zero. Set a keyframe and then move forward one frame and then set it up to about 500. So now the particles are going to come out as the missile is fired. So let's work on the look. So first thing we want to do is take the velocity from motion and turn it to a negative value. And what this will do is make it seem like the missile is pushing the exhaust out faster than it's shooting. And also to compensate for the fact that the jet is supposedly still moving forward. So we'll increase that, really make it intense. And now let's work on the particle look. So we'll scroll down here and let's change it from a sphere to a cloudlet, which will give it a little bit more of a noisy look. We'll turn up the size random a bit and maybe we'll have the particles get larger over life. So if we go size over life, we're just going to paint in here small and get big and we can smooth it out here. Now we want the life to be really short. So maybe like 0 0.2, 0 0.25 is maybe a good value. And let's set it so the opacity over life fades out. So here we go. Maybe the life could be a touch longer. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Maybe take the size up a touch. So now let's give the smoke a little bit of definition by going to the shading tab and just turn on the shading for the shadow lit. And you can see there's just a little bit of counter shading on the clouds. Let's see here. If we go to the settings, we can turn up the opacity. And that just gives it a nice look. Maybe we'll change the color to like a dark blue to match the ambient light of our scene. 
and we could play around with the distance and you know tweak it in of course once we turn on the motion blur for the layer so hit f4 turn on the motion blur and then turn on the motion blur it's going to be pretty blurred out so it's not going to matter too much but you know those are the settings that you want to play with to uh to get the smoke trails to look right that looks pretty good and now we want to create more of a fiery looking smoke so what we could do is just duplicate the layer Control D and instead of using the shadow looking particles let's go and turn the shadow let off and let's come up to the top here and play with the particle setting what I'm gonna do here is change it from a cloudlet back to a sphere and the life is gonna be very very short we want this just to be a fiery little burnout and let's play around with the size of this over life let's see something like that and smooth out the result and let's go change the color uh, let's see maybe make it like an orange color and set the transfer mode to add or screen so that'll give it a more fiery look let's take a look here let's set the transfer mode of the layer to screen so that's looking pretty good let's maybe make it a touch larger and lower the opacity here. Cool. Maybe more size randomness. So we can just kind of play around with the settings a bit, but I think that looks nice. Now we could add a little bit of a glow. So we could do effect, stylize, glow, and turn up the intensity here and maybe change it from the original colors to the AB color down here and set it to more of a reddish orange color and then crank up the intensity a bit there we go and you know check it out with the motion blur on make sure that it still looks cool here I'll just move the background so we can see it a bit better Okay, so that looks pretty good. We could even duplicate that one more time and maybe make some really small particles. And let's see. And then turn up the velocity a bit. If we turn the size down and almost like a spark kind of a look. Let's just set the life to... something like that and you can even go down into the settings for the rendering and turn up the motion blur boost so the opacity boost and just get that to look a little bit more like sparks so they're kind of shooting off there and we really want them to be nice and thin we don't want those to be too noticeable but just a nice little touch when you're trying to make it look a little bit more realistic now about the interactive lighting well we have a light already in the right position so what we can do is hit T for the intensity and we can keyframe it up so we'll set a keyframe we'll move forward turn the intensity up we'll move forward and maybe we'll just fade it out just so that the light stops affecting the scene as it passes the jet and so now we have some nice interactive light for our missile now it's moving terribly slow but you know if we just change the keyframe for our missile all of those effects are connected so that's what's cool about this effect is that it's very dynamic and interactive now if you get the sky pack we also have included 200 amazing aircraft sound effects and what you can do is open up those sound effects and we have a couple of different things like missiles and we can see here you have like missile launch missile launch and they include kind of a mechanical sound along with a missile launching sound so we could add those into our project I think I actually have one missile launch number four we could bring that out hit LL and that'll bring up the waveform and then if we time that just right so just as it fires and move the sound effect over to the large explosive part and then turn the audio on 
pretty cool. And maybe we could add some camera shake and some of that other stuff, but this is the basic idea for adding your cool missile firings. Now, if you have action essentials, you can actually load up some of the charges and use those as well. So here we have one of the uh, explosive charges and we could just simply bring that out into the comp and it's just good to use for that initial explosion. Let's see here. Maybe set it to a screen. Let me stretch it out a little bit even. And anytime you can mix some live action stuff in, it's just gonna make the results a little bit better. So I'll scale this down. We can even hand animate this. So hit P. Once your shot's done, you can just kind of go in there and add a little bit more detail like this. So we'll trim it and then connect it. And we don't have to use the whole thing. We can just use it for a couple of frames. Maybe turn the motion blur on. And uh, you know, if we want it to animate the whole time, but really it's about that initial sort of Last. So maybe we pre-time it just a little bit so that we see it shoot right before it takes off. Now you can play around with the glow to make it more intense, but that's looking pretty good. I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching. My name is Andrew Kramer, and we'll see you next time.